and we are back with another Black with No Cream podcast. New episode every single Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, aka Ben Real Verse World. On today's episode, we sit down with my dog and TDE's very own behind the scenes legend, Matt Genius. Matt runs the entire merch operation for Top Dog Entertainment, which, if you are not familiar with, houses some of the top artists today, such as Kendrick Lamar, Schoolboy Q, SZA, etc., etc. Matt has been working with them for years, perfecting the online shopping experience for fans, marketing options, and even tours with the artists. He just completed his largest job yet, which is putting together a pop-up shop for Kendrick Lamar's damn tour in the United States. They did pop-up shops all over the country before a shit ton of shows and allowed fans to come and purchase rare merch. It was a huge success. Matt is also a very talented artist going under the name Matt Genius and just now began calling himself R.I.P. Matt Genius, which he explains the name in this episode. Matt and I met on Schoolboy Q's Blank Face Tour and I was even on his podcast, Genius Frequencies, about a year ago, if you want to check that out. Plan to hear some of the great stories like the time he toured with Kendrick Lamar and Kanye West and how before he was actually employed by TDE, he would leave his 9 to 5 job at a bank to drive over an hour each way to go to the TDE house to intern. Matt is incredibly inspiring and very wise when it comes to music and marketing. You can plan to gain some good insight on this episode right here. If this is your first time tuning into the podcast, you're probably wondering what does Black Window Cream stand for? Black Window Cream is a private content creator group fueled by caffeine, or at least I take my coffee Black Window Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We are a private group on Facebook, open to creators of all kinds, aka if you make videos, if you're a photographer, if you do marketing, management, editing, dancing, music, etc, etc, etc. All creators are welcome. Our private group has been growing rapidly. We have a shit ton of members working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our group if you want to by going to blackwindowcream.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. If you're interested in supporting Black Window Cream, please go to bwnc.com slash merch. We have hats, shirts, stickers, pins, shit, all kinds of shit. It's all available in the store. I appreciate anyone who picks up some merch. If you don't have the funds, I totally get it. There's another way you can support. Just leave us a review on iTunes. Any review I get helps me learn what to do. It helps people find the shit, everything like that. You get how it goes, whatever. Just you know leave a review share the podcast with your homies etc etc you get it all right that's it i don't want to keep you too long i hope to see you guys in the private group enjoy the work week keep creating make sure to tune in every single sunday for a new black window cream episode and without further ado i bring to you my motherfucking interview with mad genius and the most epic podcast intro ever created right motherfucking now Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. And we're fucking back. Today, with my friend, Matt Gant. Yes, sir. How you doing, dog? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed. Yeah, you are blessed, man. Yeah. You, uh, Matt Matt is a dear friend of mine, and we met a little while back um, on Schoolboy Q's tour. He was slinging merch, and uh, I was shooting videos, and we became friends. Yeah, we did. We truly became friends that one day, uh, we had a day off, and we went and got food together. We walked really far. Yeah. And then I think that's when our friendship began. But Matt does um, like all of the TDE merch shit. He basically is the behind-the-scenes dude that is running the merch stores. He's in charge of pop-ups, just manhandled the fuck out of this uh, Kendrick Lamar pop-up. That Was was that all U.S., or was that out of state, too, or out of country? Uh, it, was, it was U.S. right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he just conquered that shit made sure all these pop-ups were working and also is a motherfucking musician which i didn't know until you know part way into this tour but matt is a beast rapper and also produces his shit too you produce all your own music uh no 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 no. but you like make beats and shit yeah 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 I yeah do. yeah um but yeah matt's dope so what's gucci bro we're drinking wine right now yeah yeah matt just got here so i was like all right we're gonna have some wine I had like eight cups of coffee today, so neither of us were interested in that. Do you do you drink coffee? Um, uh, for the sake of this podcast, yes. Thanks, dude. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, no, I do. Uh, y'all probably don't think I'm a little bitch, but I actually drink decaf. 
Uh, uh, everyone stops playing the podcast right now. <laughs> it's okay. I prove that. No. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah, honestly, DK, like what the fuck? When I 85? drink, nah. When I drink, when I drink coffee, like I just get like mad jittery and like, oh yeah, I cannot be productive because like I just be like, nah. I hear that. Uh, uh, Red like, Bull and that shit do the same thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So like Weird. decaf, like decaf still has like caffeine in it, so. I've mastered it to where it's like the right amount for me to where I get that like kick and that like yeah. all right let's get shit done like but if I drink like a grande like 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 a baby coffee like a white chocolate mocha or something like I'm I'm done. I'll well, be that's because no one drinks that shit anyway, <laughs> dog. That's you should be done. No one's drinking that shit. Not playing. <laughs> nah, Matt is fucking super sick. Uh, I know we're already on a tangent, but um, you just really recently released this new um uh, like character in your life which is because he if you follow matt on the internet it's um what is it what's your handle uh mg the genius mg the genius yeah and then you just created another instagram account called r.i.p matt genius right Right. yep what the fuck what is that what is that um so like the past the past year like 2017 has been like a real like awakening like for myself like in terms of everything internal what's going on with me and and uh i came up with this concept of like killing off like like my ego Mm. because my ego has been running a lot of shit that's been happening in my life and i felt like that character was the mad genius character which is you know what i go by the stage name you know right and i felt like that character like after like doing these shows and kind of getting recognition and <clears throat> all this stuff like my ego started to kind of take over and I just felt like not nah, like it's not happening like Weird. you know so this this project this character everything that I'm working on in terms of the music and even the merchandise too like you know because I'm, I'm doing the clothing with it too it's literally like kind of like an open casket funeral for this character that's so tight yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the music and stuff is very reflective of it. Like, um, like the first song on the on the project that I'm doing is called The Funeral. And mm-hmm. it's just, like, me just kind of going in on, like, it just really exposing, like, what's going on in my mind in terms of how I feel about myself. So, like, give it, okay, so just to put, like, a back spin on this shit, um, we met and you were doing the merch for Q, right? Mm-hmm. And then... We had a conversation. I actually was. You were talking about how you want. You had so much to do because you guys just. You had just released like the actual web stores for each artist, right? Like Q's web store came out. Or I mean, maybe it's not a web store. Maybe it's on TD's site. But like, yeah, we just relaunched. We relaunched uh, uh, the the web store. So he had like you could go there and find all this exclusive merch, and then you had to like go to the tour to get some other shit or whatever. But but it launched and it was like booming, Mm -hmm. and you were running that and also on the road at the same time. So you were like trying to multitask and it was like pretty difficult. But then you were like, damn, I just need to get back to LA so I can like handle this business because yeah. it's like so crazy. Right. Linked you with my friend Zane and then Zane came out and you were able to like relieve yourself from that or whatever. Yeah. But it's crazy because like you were doing that, leave the tour to go back to work on this shit. And you've been with TD for how long? Uh, a little over five years now. Five years. Yeah. So, but you go back and I know you like... They, like, found out you did music and shit, but it was cool because, like, later in Q's tour, you, like, ended up doing shows with right. us or whatever. So, Matt's now, like, going and performing. And he was opening – or he was, we were sitting there, like, doing merch, and I was like, bro, you should open this shit because, like, I think we had lost our opener. Yeah. We had Joey, obviously, that was supporting the tour, but we, had, we were supposed to have another opener, and mm-hmm. they, like, dipped out or something happened. Right. I was like, yo, you should do that shit. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that'd be cool. I'm like, it would be cool. Yeah. You should do that shit right now, though. <laughs> yeah. That's what's crazy. Like, that story is, like, crazy because, like, after that combo, like, obviously, I'm still on the road doing merch or whatever. And then, uh, and I think we were, like, coming back from Canada and Top just calls me and was, like, you know, just checking in, whatever. And then he's like, yo, so, like, what do you think about opening up for Q? I was like, what? Like, hell yeah like I, of course like you know and but <clears throat> nothing happened during that time and then all the craziness happened on the web store you know we're getting it's, it's going crazy and uh sidebar i'm not the only one who does this i don't want anybody to think i'm the only one no for sure got, there's like a whole got, team yeah it's three of us diane g-day we all fucking kill the shit so. right 
Um, but anyways, like, so I had gone, I came back home, you know, tried to get everything in, in order with the online store. <clears throat> and then the tour comes back around to Cali. And then Top kind of brought it back up to me and was like, yo, like, I want you to open for Q, like, you know, for the LA shows and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, rehearse, get your set ready, all this stuff. And I was like, bro, like. That's crazy. Fuck it. Yeah, hell yeah, man. And if you're not familiar with, like, the TDE background, Top owns the label. Like, that's his label, right? Mm-hmm. Top Top Dog Entertainment. And um, so it's, like, a big deal to have this motherfucker hitting you, like, yo, yeah, you should, you know what I mean? you're my. I know you run merch and do this shit, but, like, I want you to actually perform songs. Yeah. What? what when was the first time you got to do that on that tour? Uh, the first Vegas? show, no, nah, the first, <laughs> the first, the nah. first, no, I mean with first us, one, with the Q tour. Yeah, the first one was, uh, uh, Frisco, I think it was Oakland. No, oh, was yeah, Oakland. that's right. I forgot we did some of those shows and then came back that way. Yeah, it was Oakland. That shit was terrible. Why? It was terrible. I had like this whole bit, like what I wanted to say. I had like a skit and all this shit. I thought I was like fucking Q or Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I can woo the crowd with like, you know, skits and all this shit. And then uh, my DJ, like, we had this whole thing where, like, any, anything I would say, um, he would hit a cue and say, bitch, I'm balling. Because I had a song called Bitch, I'm Balling, right? Love that song. So when I when I, we, I was doing a skit, and then he would hit the cue, and he'd be like, bitch. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> and this is in front of, like, a 1,000 people, like, yeah. 1,500 people. So I'm like, all right, let, let me keep going. Like, it was like, bitch. And I'm like, fuck. Like, it's like silent. It's like awkward. Somebody yeah. somebody yelled out, like, just perform the <laughs> fucking song. <laughs> How do I not? I must have been uh, you, I or think he was. Yeah, I think he was editing some oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's you were editing. Funny. Yeah, I was like, fuck. Like, oh, shit. I was like, you know what? Just fucking yeah, play, it. play it. But it turned out good. Like, yeah, everything was cool. Because as soon as that, I think that I must have low key got there right. In the middle of Bitch on Ball. Yeah. Our, he, that was yeah. the only song that I really knew at the time. Yeah. And when you played it, you played it last. Yeah, so yeah. I saw like the very tail end of your set. And it looked like it was lit. Yeah. I would have never known all that <laughs> shit happened. That's crazy. But that's... yeah. All right. Like circling back even farther, like before we get into the music side of shit, like what, you know, how the fuck did you end up like being involved with TD in the first place? How did you land this position? Man. Uh, so back in 2011, <clears throat> I was working with... Um, I was working with some guys doing like clothing or whatever, like just some local shit. Like make designing and printing. And yeah, yeah, just some just some local shit. We're just trying to you know get our names out there. And then we met Fredo Tovar from A Plus Films, and we were kind of just you know just brainstorming like how do we how do we get out there? And at the time, he had a relationship with TDE, and he was shooting videos. He shot High Power, I think, at the time. So he was really tight. And then he was like, "Yo." Like, you know, th- there's this guy, Kendrick Lamar, like, you know, he's he's buzzing in L.A., blah, blah, blah. This was even before Section 80 came out. So Kendrick wasn't really on a crazy scale like right, that. He was right. buzzing in L.A., but n- obviously nowhere where he is now. So we were like, uh, yeah, man, like, I'll be tight. He was like, what if you guys do, like, a concert, promote the concert, blast your name everywhere and as like the merch company yeah like the the promoter so you would be like the host of the show exactly mm-hmm. exactly so we're like yeah i think that'd be that'd be brilliant and we had you know some resources to pay for the concert pay for him performing all this stuff so we made it happen and uh from there that's where i met dave Dave free and i kept the relationship with him i would see him like around <clears throat> like fairfax signings all this stuff and then um I fell out with the clothing company mm. and then I was I was like, man, like, what am I going to do now? So um, me and my girl were talking and she was like, like, you should really like work with TDE. Like, this is the time, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right. So I shot Dave uh, the email like, yo, like, if you need interns, I'm here, blah, blah, blah. Not expecting him to answer. And then immediately, like, he answered like, yeah, dude, like, hell yeah, blah, blah, blah. But then... <clears throat> I emailed him back and he never answered. So I'm like, fuck, like, I don't want to keep bugging this dude. So right. how do I, how do I kind of like finesse my way in or whatever? So, um, time goes by. Then, uh, Good Camp, Good Kid Mad City was about to come out. Fredo was, uh, shooting a commercial 
and I was helping Fredo like going to shoots or whatever. A commercial for TD for, for Good Kendrick? Kid, Mad City, yeah. Okay. So he hit me up. He was like, "Yo, come down. Like we're about to shoot, whatever, whatever." So I would help him out with like little shit, like moving stuff, moving lights, blah blah. Right, blah. right. Um, so then Dave had went to that shoot and I was like, oh, okay, like this is opportunity. Like I gotta, I gotta, you know, remember me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I was like, yo, like I'm serious about the internship, blah, blah, blah. He was like, all right, like hit, the, hit up this person. Um, so I hit, I hit up, uh, Duran, the homie Duran at the time he was doing the merchandise, hit him up, came down to Carson, started interning, fucking interning led to. And me overseeing this shit and you know this is like one thing after another i just kept taking initiative and here i am damn yeah that's fucking crazy yeah what was uh when you did that show what was um how many people were like coming out to the like how big was that show for kendrick the first one you oh, it was huge it was huge the the one we did is actually the one that um uh like snoop Everybody came out. Oh shit! Like they passed the torch to him. Like oh like shit, that was West your Coast. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so but like, was that the goal? Like, was the goal like we want to be promoters for shows? But you're just printing. Sh- what was nah. like the concept behind the name or the brand you were trying to push? Like, why should people have given a fuck? The the so like we just wanted to be seen with like obviously with influencers and artists, but we didn't really understand what we were doing. It was kind of just like. You know, we want to we want to get known. This guy has he, he's popular in L.A. Let's just attach our name to his and let's see. But we didn't really understand the 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 depth of how this can really pro- propel this brand. And that, I think that's why it didn't propel mm. because we really didn't. First of all, we didn't really build a relationship with TD and explain like what the brand was about and all this stuff and just really connect on a human to human basis. Right, right. And I think that's why it didn't happen. But obviously we were young and didn't really, we were naive to all the shit. But, um, uh, at the time it was huge. Like it, it was, I think that was at that point, that was Kendrick's biggest show. That's like, fucking yeah, crazy. that was, and I'm sure like, if you ask him today, like he'll remember that show. Right. It was just so pivotal in his career. Like that was like a stepping stone in yeah. his career to like the next level, Damn. you know? Cause after that, then it was good Kim Mass City. Mm-hmm. And then, you the know, explosion. what happens after yeah, that, yeah. like, That's you know, trippy. yeah. So for, for us to be a part of that, like that was like wild. Mm-hmm. And then for me to be here still like in this situation, it's like, what the fuck? Some like, weird shit. Yes. So what was like the first, the first time that you actually went from intern to like getting paid. Cause like, I, I think I'm a firm believer and you got to like pay your dues. Yeah. I very much know that side of the life. Yeah. And there's like a point where, okay, cool. Like I kind of did it. Right. Can I get, uh, I need to pay for rent. Yeah. Or yeah. Some sort of the yeah. gas I spend to get over right. here. But like for you, what was more important to you? Like, how did you, you know, navigate your way to getting paid, I guess. Cause the listeners here, I think are looking towards how do I, you know, I want to put in the work and I think, they're willing to do it. They just don't know how to value themselves. You know right. What I mean? So yeah. like, what did you do? Man, honestly, I just, I stayed honest. Like I was honest. Like, um, I was working at, uh, I was working at like a, like a bank at the time, like an office bank or whatever. And I was a temp mm. at this bank. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, I'll thug it out, whatever, whatever. And then, um, the, the, the drive for me was like mad far. Like I drove from, Agora Hills to Carson. Like Is Agora Hills where you're from? No, that's where I worked. Mm. That's where I worked. So I've worked so that's like I think that's like fucking fifty miles oh, or shit. something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And to I work was, at a bank? Yeah. Yeah. So there wasn't no banks close to you? The, the, I mean, I was the one I was hiring at the yeah, time. I guess. Like yeah, Damn, like, that's crazy. Yeah, because the homie had the plug and I, I really needed a job at the time. So yeah. I got the job, but it's it's fifty miles from Carson, not from where I, where I lived. It's fifty miles from Carson, so I was driving that like almost every day. Like I think hundred some miles. Yeah, it, it was crazy. So damn. So <clears throat> I was struggling, like I was struggling big time, like struggling. I remember like there was one moment where <laughs> like my tank was on E, and I lived in Woodland Hills, right? So I was in Carson. I had to get to Woodland Hills, which is like. A trip. Yeah, 40 miles or whatever. My yeah. tank is on E, and I'm like, fuck, I got to get home. 
So I'm driving like, fuck, like, what am I going to do? I had zero money in my bank, like, literally zero. And I'm like, fuck, how am I going to get home? So I'm like, all right, whatever. Drive, 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 drive. And I'm like, I'm not going to make it. There's, there's, no, there's no way I'm going to make it. Pull over. I'm like, fuck, I'm just going to try this shit out. <laughs> Swipe my card in the fucking tank. That shit worked. I got like 20 bucks, bucks out of it. Got home, whatever. But I, so I was honest with, with Top, like, explaining, like, oh, you know, I don't have any money for gas, da 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 whatever. And then... Uh, and at the time, you're doing what for him? So wait, okay, just to put it, like, to line everything up. You're driving that far to work at a bank. Meanwhile, you're also interning? So mm-hmm. you're doing both at the same time? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, how many hours are you putting in at TD? Uh, shit, I would get there, like, I would get there, like, at 6, like, 6 p.m., because I got off work, like, at three it took like three hours to get there God damn. yeah traffic like nasty ass traffic in la get there at six and then i would leave like one like one two a.m have to get up the next morning at six a.m so i get like four hours of sleep just dug it out wow yeah like dug it out and then um but yeah. i i kept it honest with him and i was i think what they saw is i was just really 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 hungry like i didn't give a fuck like if they li- if if it was in Vegas, like I dropped to Vegas, mm-hmm. like I, I really didn't give a fuck because I knew the opportunity. And then uh, one day I found out I was getting laid off at the bank, and then I just told him like, "Hey, I'm about to get laid off. Like, you know, my time here might be affected because now I need to look for a job and get paid." And da 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 da. And he was just like, "Well, when you get laid off, just come work for us." You're like, "Oh, I just got laid off." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like right away. Yeah, actually, conveniently, <laughs> uh, right now. <laughs> no, but but that day? conversation, I that wasn't even my intent. Like I was just like, I'll still intern, but the hours just might so be know. affected. Yeah, like, just so you, you know, know, it's not gonna be as hard. Yeah, I might, I might have to come one day a week or two days a week, right. but I'll still come. Like, yeah, that's not a that's not an issue. I'm just letting you know, the time might be less because I need to find a job. Damn, to, and you he know. just turned around like threw it at you. Yep. So the first job you had is was what title like what did you get really like, um i what i think uh at that time like i think the was the ron still there i can't remember but um at that time like obviously the business was was growing yeah, because kendrick fresh. just put out an album um obviously we get more eyes more attention so right this merch is moving more like even more and then i was just trying to figure out ways to keep it make it more efficient so we didn't have to focus on like tedious things and focus on big picture things so i mean that's what i would do just like try to figure shit out you yeah. know what i mean try to figure shit out and then um and then the homie duran left or whatever and i stepped up and was just like started taking because top was still involved in in the merch like he would like fucking put in orders like for t-shirts to get printed or hoodies to get printed. Like, he was still doing that. Damn. Yeah, like, he would, like, go in the emails and answer email, like, that type of shit. And I was like, nah, like... You don't got to Yeah, do let that. me let me take... But that's how that's how he is. He just is like... Yeah, he's Hustle like you it. broke. Like, hustle like you broke. Like, that. that's the For mentality. Sure. So I just started taking stuff off his plate, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of... It was just kind of like a... I see a need, I'm going to do it. Like, you know, what's your official title right now? Or like, what would you say? Was uh, it like, I mean, merchandise manager. I don't I, like it doesn't really. You yeah, guys all know your role. Yeah, basically. It's just, yeah. Just fucking get shit done. That's, <laughs> That's basically what it is. But when did you when did you finally tell them about your music shit? Because like you've been doing that because. All right. Where are you from originally? L.A. Just somewhere around here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Baldwin Hills. Okay. The well, jungles, as they like to say it. The jungles? Yeah. Why do they say that? Um, well, it's it's like a it's a neighborhood, it's a blood neighborhood. Um I think like back in the days there um celebrities and shit used to live there and like it's a bunch of trees and stuff, so it looks like a jungle. Oh for real? Yeah. But it's turned into like I mean it's it's a it's it's a it's a neighborhood, man. It's a, a oppressed neighborhood. Mm. You know, so that's another conversation. Right. Well, shit. But yeah, that's where How I'm How long from. did you live there, though? Uh, I lived there from five to... Five to... High school? End of high school? What, you, your parents were like... you're Okay, so you were born in L.A., lived there to high school, 
What were your family like? What did your family do? I'm trying to figure out what was it that made you literally drive over 120 miles a day. You know Man, what I mean? Like, how did you yeah, get that instilled? I, in you? It was just it, the struggle. Like my, I think my whole life, like it, it's always been a struggle. Like my mom is single parent mom. Uh, she's deaf, mm. and uh, and like my sur- my upbringing was very. Uh, it was always challenging. Like it, I, I always had a challenge in front of me. You right. know what I'm saying? So whenever there's challenges in front of me, like it, I'm used to it. I'm used to living like with a lot of challenges. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and my mom was on drugs and stuff like that. So it was just, I always had to like fend for myself. Even when I was like eight, seven years old, like I had to always figure out like, you know, when's my next meal? Like, you know, I had to go to a friend's house and I'm like, oh, okay, like that friend, you know, their family always eats at night. So I'm going to go spend a night over there because right. they eat every night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's, so that's always been my mentality. Like I just need to go, like go, 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 go. So I'm okay. You wow. know what I mean? So. Is your mom like 100% deaf? Yeah. Fuck. My yeah, sister, yeah. my sister, that's like uh, her job. She like w- works with deaf kids yeah. and will go to like schools and like, tr- or no, no, blind kids. Sorry, I just fucked that up. Yeah. My mom used to have a patient when she was a nurse that was deaf and my mom would come home and know like she was trying to, t- I was so bad at retaining it, but she yeah. tried to teach us like little sign language. Oh, that's crazy. Shit. Yeah, it's dope. And I tried to take a sign language class in college because I'm like, I feel like this is very important. Like, yeah. People live amongst us that yeah. fucking can't speak. Like, yeah. Like, how are we? Yeah. Or can't, you know what I mean? Like, they can't hear what I'm saying. Right, 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 right. And it, I couldn't get a class. That was crazy. Yeah, man. It's it's dope because like, uh, I think, was it 2014, uh, I managed to do, I managed to put out a, um, like a sign language T for TDE. So like it's spelled out TDE, but in sign language. Oh, dope. So that was, that was a really dope moment. Cause I was like, damn, that's crazy. How like I was able to like put that out there. That you get your, are you still tied with your mom? Like you ever see your mom and shit? Could yeah. So, shirt? so, uh, so, uh, when was it? 2000, 2014, she actually had a stroke. Oh shit. Yeah. So it was a bad stroke. You know, she almost passed away. She went into a coma and stuff like that. She's alive, but, now um the stroke has affected like her you know yeah mental capability like all that stuff like so it's it's been tough but uh that's obviously one of the driving factors for me too is like you know to to live through all of this and still be okay like there's another kid out there that might not be Uh you know so i have to i have to share all these experiences and be like yo, like, you're going to be good. Just mm. use this as fuel to fucking, like, just take over shit. You know what I right. mean? So, yeah, what was your question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just <laughs> say shit. Yeah. But were you bringing these problems? Like, you, you have all these things stacked on you. Are you bringing that to work, like, as fuel? Because I know a lot of kids, I see a lot of people today, like, go through shit, right? Yeah. Everyone's got a problem. Yeah. But they bring it as in, like, that should be the ticket like hey man look man my mom's deaf and she's doing drugs right yeah. now and i don't have money and like right. all this shit can i get a job like right. they use that as a crutch right, right which right, i right, feel right. like there's a time and a place for certain things like that but right. like did that did you ever have to talk about that to help influence anything or was it just a f- so fact like i feel like as a, a person i'm gonna be hiring you off of just seeing you do what you're doing yeah or yeah. were you even telling them that you were driving that nah, far th- no like one of the things, like, this is one of the things that I've, like, recognized with myself this year or whatever <clears throat> is, like, I was so ashamed of that part of my life, which I don't even understand why. Mm. Like, so I wouldn't share it with anybody. Like, I wouldn't share it with anybody. Like, there was a, a select few people in my life who knew my mom was even deaf or who knew, like, she was in the hospital or just these things. Like, I would rarely share it. And, um, so no, I didn't, I I never wow. used that as like a crutch or whatever. Like when I first met Lily, like my girl, like she thought, <laughs> she thought I lived in like a white picket fence house and like really? mom and dad is there and like all this stuff. But I, I guess that's how I carry myself. I don't right. know. Right. Yeah. So. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't know any of that shit yeah. until right now. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So then what, um, uh, I guess, damn, it's so wild to hear that shit. Yeah. 
but it makes sense. It makes way too much sense. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the way you think about shit is just different, and you do carry yourself in, like, a manner that's, like, always pushing forward, like, no matter what the cost is. But I guess now you get to this point where everything is booming, and now you're doing this web source shit. Like, how much influence are you bringing to to shaping, like, the company's presence online you know what i mean like as yeah. far as carrying the shit like first top's doing all this busy work yeah and you know he doesn't need to be doing that shit what other things are you implementing into the company like that you can recall i mean i'm sure it was like a group effort by the team and shit but like what are you providing to them like hey yo we should try this or we should do this and it's actually working it's bringing in new dollar signs it's yeah doing all shit. like what's stuff like that that you've been putting in over the last few years man honestly like how i think is like where where is the need like whatever need like if there's a need in shipping like you know lowering shipping costs if there's a need in marketing if there's a need in fucking i don't know anything where there's like a gap like i think my specialty is like closing the gap Mm. because i'm i'm i think my one of my passions is like curiosity Mm -hmm. and just kind of researching shit and figuring it out so, like, whenever I see there's a gap in something, like, I'll be like, all right, like, let's figure out how to make this more efficient. Let's make this more efficient. Let's make this more efficient. Like, <clears throat> one of the things that I did early on was, like, make the, sh- the whole shipping process more efficient. Like, is cr- and this is just how much of a hustler top is, but, like, he would literally, like, go through every single email in Gmail when we were getting orders yeah. and print from the email, like through PayPal, like he would click on the email, click, you know, the the transaction, print the order, cut it, you know, and like do it like that, you know, because he was just like, dude, like this shit's got to get done. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking like, okay, there's, there's a more efficient way of doing this. Let's make this even more efficient. Like let's, let's, there's bulk, you know, ordered printing so we don't have to individually go through it and just little things like that that kept making it more and more and more and more efficient and then obviously you take that to marketing with you know email marketing and um making sure the store is like easily navigate you know you can move through it and all this stuff and and he probably um, appreciates that shit so much absolutely yeah absolutely man and and those little things really keep uh your business intact because if you're if you if there's loose ends everywhere you know the the object is gonna fall apart right you know what i'm saying so i think that's where my specialty was was just making stuff more efficient what would you say like pushed you into the position to kind of pull off these pop-up shops that you just did because damn damn album came out and then you did how many pop-up shops we did uh shit I can't remember off the top I want to say seventeen eighteen holy shit maybe more so uh, you were on the tour literally just going to these spots and making sure shit happened yeah 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 man um so we had a meeting with um with Dave and he was like my so like we haven't done pop ups prior to that like ever. Mm-hmm. And we had a meeting, and then my what is, idea. What is a pop up? Before you explain this, a pop up store is like so people understand. bringing like it's it's a, it's um it's a like I guess a limited time store, you know where so exclusive you, pieces might be there that you yeah, can't get anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah, and I think that's been the model um, for stores now because everyone shops online, mm-hmm. right? So. Now that everyone is shopping online, it's it's a cool way to have an online store, have a, a physical presence right. so where you can actually feel stuff tangible, you know, and like mm-hmm. bring it back to that. So for the longest time, like we've we've been talking about do a, doing a pop up and we just never did it. So then I was like, man, like damn came out like we have to do a pop-up like we have to you start thinking about this This yeah even before damn came out it was like dude we have to do a pop-up this year like there's no way we can't let a pop pop like another year go by and not do a pop-up so i brought it to dave and he was like oh yeah yeah definitely uh i want to do a pop-up in every city and i was like uh (laughs) you're uh, like fuck i didn't i wasn't trying to i wasn't trying to do all that but you know, he was like, you know, we could do it. And then I was like, oh, fuck. All right. Like, let's do it then. Like, fuck it. Like, 
So it was your job to kind of coordinate and make sure this shit started to happen? Yeah, like, just figuring out where were we going to do it. Like, we sat down, me, G Day, and Diane sat down and was like, okay, like, what makes the most sense? You know, where are we going to place pop ups that makes the most sense and like where it's like convenient for everyone across the US? And obviously, we don't want to do one in every single city because then that just would not be efficient for us. Right. Um, so yeah, we sat down, we figured it out and then we just started like thinking of like, you know, what stores we can host it in that is still, uh, aligned with what the damn album was and just everything. So you were taking aligned. over like, like give an example, like what's a store you would take over that kind of work for the brand? Is it like a, like a Adidas store or something like that? Yeah. I mean, we tried to make it to where it was like, uh, like boutique shops. So mm-hmm. where there wasn't like super corporate influence because at the end of the day like td is about the people and like kind of a grassroots approach so we wanted it to stay that way so we reached out to like boutiques that we had relationships with or we didn't have relationships with and like kind of just be like yo let's partner up let's let's fucking do something dope and most most not all but if all like we're down like they're like oh hell yeah dude like let's do it like so what were they doing? Were they were the people that were there that you took over the shop? Are they still selling shit at your pop up? No, they like, would clear it's out there. Literally inventory? a store takeover, and then we kind of made the stores like a vibe look, yeah, to where it's still consistent with damn and mm. the whole entire album. So I was yeah. just looking at uh, to make a post earlier, and I saw the picture of like everybody that was must have been selling the merch or whatever. All had all white. Mm-hmm. and shit like that so mm-hmm. like what was the goal behind the aesthetic of the store like you want to make sure each store looked the same way like obviously you want to match the branding of it but like what was the mindset behind that um man honestly that's that was more so like diane because obviously oh, explain them explain who your like the team is so diane is um kendrick stylist and she styles for q and SZA and a whole bunch of other people so she's a fucking boss yeah she's a fucking beast crazy man. she's a beast um so she comes from like the stylistic background and just the the i guess like curating a certain look mm-hmm. for brands and she does it very 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 well um g day is an actual designer so he designed literally probably everything on the God site damn at this one point. dude right now yeah i mean I, we all have input but he's the one that's really like in illustrator in wow. photoshop like really fucking going in like damn yeah and he has you know he has other people that he works with too that help out and whatever so um the three of us just kind of come together and like figure out like what's best for the brand like what is gonna like translate and push the brand further you know right. what i mean because that that's kind of our whole thing right now is like just really pushing the brand to where it's not just merchandise for, for td yeah it's, right. it's like you can literally wear this stuff and like it's not it's not promotional product yeah like just saying damn across the shit yeah or it's, it's, yeah it's literally like a, a piece like there's a story behind the mm-hmm. piece like it, each individual piece has a story and then we want to sell it to where there's a story behind that and it's just a whole experience we're really trying to hone in on like the experience in creating a brand instead of just merchandise. Isn't that crazy? You went from like working at this bank <laughs> to like this shit. Yeah, it's it, it's wild, but I'm a firm believer in in um, visualization and just having a vision. Yeah. And as as wild as it is, I I didn't see myself like being in this situation, but I always saw myself like doing something within the music industry and and like having an opinion that mattered and all that stuff so to like for it to actually become real is like damn that's crazy but like kind of imagine yeah i imagined it you know were you making music before you started working with td yeah 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 yeah. i've been i've been doing music for i was like rapping since i was a kid really yeah i was i had like fucking you know those those uh, books where you practice cursive? Yeah. I used to like lines. Yeah, I used to write rhymes and that shit. Like and I was like fucking like seven, eight Damn. years old, yeah. In cursive? Nah. You weak. 
<laughs> You're not that talented. <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. Damn, that was crazy. But then when did you start like recording your music? Uh, I started recording. Like I had a friend in high school when I was like 15, and uh, he was rapping at the time, and I started making beats. I was like, yo, I'm just make beats or whatever. So we kind of like had this thing going. But I would still rap over him. I would like rap over my own beats. And then one day he was like, I was like really whack. And really? Uh, yeah, he was whack too. But <laughs> he was better me. He was better than me at yeah, the time. Yeah, but both trash. Yeah. We, <laughs> we're both <laughs> yeah, right. And then uh, so he was like, oh, that rhyme is tight. Like you should record it. So I was like, oh, for real? Like, all right. So like we recorded, like we fucking ditched football practice. We was playing football in high school at the time. We were like, we didn't start. We didn't get no playing time. So we're just like, fuck this, man. Let's just ditch practice and right. go record. So we recorded. It's like $20 an hour or whatever. Oh, shit. Paid. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. It, it was, we were serious about it, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was like my first time re- actually like recording something, like my vocals. And then after that, like still making beats, but I really wasn't taking it serious. I went to college, went to CSUN. Um, what were you studying there? Uh, marketing. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. <laughs> Makes motherfucking sense. Did yeah. you graduate there? Yeah, I graduated. I graduated. Uh, I didn't take it seriously, though. But I was going to say graduated. The timeline goes graduated college, got the job at the bank. TD? Uh, no. So it, I graduated. I was interning at another label. I was oh, for intern- real? Yeah. So uh, the first internship that I had was with Warner Brother Records. I was interning as a, a sales intern, and that was a really cool experience because that was my first time, like, getting into the music industry yeah, and, like, really realizing, like, what it is. I was going to say, in, like, a very big way. Yeah. Like, Warner fucking brothers. Like, yeah. that's massive. Exactly. So, like, you know, before I got in, I, I always had this idea of what it was, and then to get in, it's like, oh, okay, like, this shit really is, like, a real business. Like, yeah. it's not just, like rappers and like what what people. was making you realize that like what ma- what stuck out like that um this is well, like 2010 11? this is yeah 2010 2010 2010? yeah so i was uh, a sales intern so a lot of the shit that i was dealing with was sales of records and stuff like that so i got to really see like what uh strategies and stuff they use to sell records mm. you know who they sell to like who their client is their client is walmarts and targets and all these people and they have to convince these these stores to carry a certain amount of albums because of the demand of the album that the people are having so like that's kind of like their approach at the time wow that's right crazy. and then obviously it changed to streaming and you know but damn, they totally had like flipped. so Walmart, Targets, all these places are taking the risk almost, right? Right. Buying right. out these records, assuming right. that the market's going to pick up and exactly. buy that shit. Exactly. Exactly. Damn. Yeah. And I think I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I think like album sales used to count off of like how much a label shipped to a store, not necessarily how much the store, the store sold. actually sold. So like if someone did a mill back then, it was. They, they shipped to Target and Walmart and all these stores a million copies of the album. Damn. But not necessarily a million copies got sold to right. the public. So it was kind of like just certain little shit like that. Like I started to like, I was like, oh shit, like this is a real business. Yeah. Like this is actually real business, you know what I mean? So that internship really exposed me to a lot of things and just, just entertain the entertainment industry in general i remember i had to do like a um like a the 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 future of entertainment right and uh my boss was like hey like the gaming industry is like it's gonna get crazy and all this stuff yeah so he was like do research on on the gaming industry and i did i was like whoa like dog you was right like you know like the projections of the gaming industry and like people paying more attention to the to the gaming industry and just this i mean you know what, about what, it yeah what was this job uh this was still it was still uh yeah it was still warner brother it was still so warner they were brother already records. trying to figure out how to get their music fucking with the game exactly and, exactly exactly so he his i think his job was to get all this information so his boss could pitch to like execs like hey we start fucking with these games yeah and get music in there because 
that shit's going to skyrocket. Crazy. And if we get these licensing deals, like, yeah. we can really make money off of that. So, um, yeah, I was exposed to that and just a bunch of other shit. And um, that internship ended. Then I fucking did an internship at, like, a PR firm. And I was like, nope, this shit ain't for me. Right. Like, it was there for, like, a week. Fucking bounced. Really? Yeah. I, I was, Yeah, it's just, that shit ain't for me, like. Yeah, I feel that. It, it ain't for me. But um left that. This was all still in college. And then I did um Were you doing that for credits? Like I was doing it for credits, but that wasn't my intention. My intention was to like get into the industry. That's smart. Yeah. So like the first in, the because you only need like one credit. Yeah, like, like you only need one, one internship to graduate uh, a business degree in, in, in CSUN. But I did three internships. That's crazy. Because I was just like, I mean, why not? Like, yeah, take advantage. Yeah, of you know. So then I did an internship at um, this company called Vivendi, which is a, a sub a sub company of Universal, and they deal with um, they deal with independent uh, independent films. So at the time, Netflix was like the the big independent film distributor. Like they were kind of like the only company that was doing i mean i think that was like their thing like they right. were doing independent films wow so then i started to learn about that and like distributing to netflix and walmart but on the film side and like all these independent films so it was just crazy like going through that but then i was still trying to look for a job because i'm like dog i'm about to this is my last semester of college i need a job like what the fuck i'm getting desperate entertainment is like falling i'm going to the bank yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to where the money's at no the bank. so i i i uh i got a job at a job fair i went to a job fair at csun got a job at this company called granger which is an industrial supply company had nothing to do with what i was trying to do i made decent money there but i hated it of course. i hated it i hated it hated it hated it they knew they fucking fired me so i'm like fuck what do i do now I go to fucking this other marketing company who fucking tries to sell like uh, software and all this stuff. Did not care about it, right? I'm in a sales department. Like, I can't sell the shit. Like I don't, I don't know care what it is. I don't care. Yeah. Like whatever. I go to a fucking Watch the Throne concert. Wait, oh, on the tour? Yeah, no, no, no. Just I went. Yeah, I went yeah, to I an went LA to show. Yeah, yeah. it's a Chicago one. God, super. It was hard. That's probably Crazy. one of the, one best, of the shows best shows I've ever seen. The shit was. All right, go on. I want to hear what you say about it first. <laughs> no, so I go to the show. I'm like, whoa, like blown away from the production right, first. Right. Production is crazy. Then Kanye starts doing his speech, and I'm like a, a huge Kanye head, right? So, like, I'm, I study his music. I fucking watch all his interviews and just try to emulate everything that he does musically to be as even a fraction of how uh, good he yeah. is, right? So he starts going on and talking about, like, you know, like, be great. Like, you know, no one, everyone tells you, like, be humble and all this stuff. Obviously, he's like, I don't agree with that. I think you should be humble. Right. But he was like, no one ever tells you just be great, be great, be great, do what you love, all this stuff. And he's like, I'm like, damn, you're right. So I'm <laughs> I'm working at, a, at this marketing company, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. I quit. So I send the email to my boss and like from nah, the show from the show. Wow! Quit. I'm I'm done. I'm not going into work tomorrow. I quit. I quit. Probably one of the dumbest ideas I've ever done because then I had no income. no income, no income whatsoever. So I'm like fuck, blah blah blah. And then uh, I I talked to one of my homies and he's like, yo, I'm working at this. Uh, um, I'm working at the bank. It's actually the property preservation side of the company. So. Hit him up. He's like, I can get you a job, whatever, whatever. It's going to be a temp job, though. So I start working there, and it's like, all right, this is cool. Like, I don't really need to invest a lot of my energy into it. This is kind of, like, just tedious work. So I can just do this, bounce, make my money, and then right, right. I still have energy to do, do other shit. Yeah, do other That's shit. sick. Yeah, so I started doing that, and then, obviously, boom, boom, boom. TDE. And That's crazy. It was stuff. like going to uh, CJZ and Kanye. Was like going to going to a fucking Tony Robbins <laughs> <laughs> for you, except a fraction for of real, the cost. For real, for Still real. Still expensive yeah. back then. Did you pay for that shit? 
I did, and, and they were expensive and, tickets, dude. And I got like VIP seats. So, Ooh, yeah. How much was that? I always wanted to know because I was up in like the like the first fifteen rows of the the seating. So yeah. that shit was lit. Yeah. But then I saw all the like the chairs and the VIP. Yeah. Spot. Where were you at towards the front of the stage, like the actual stage, or by the? Nah. So we were we were in the back, like by the uh, the pillar by the say yeah by the second stage. Damn. Yeah. So we I were, didn't like, even right know there. about the second stage, dude. Did you know? I had no idea. I yeah, had no you idea. You had the best spot. Yeah. And then that shit would just go off, and uh, you just see a pillar go up. Like what the fuck? I know, like, dude. I was sitting there. I remember basically I was in a, a fucking. This is hilarious. I was in like a performance class, but I did not. I, like do theater shit yeah but i was so interested in like what you know how to like tell stories and shit yeah so i'm in this class and my friend hits me my homie chase hits me and he's like yo i got four tickets to watch the throne and everyone bailed he's like but i'm gonna drive up there if you just pay for a tank of gas i'm gonna give you the ticket and so me him and my homie mark he did the same thing for mark so mark paid for the gas down to chicago i paid for it back which is like a five hour drive yeah. so we just hop in the car Head down to Chicago. I think our our homie lived there, so we stayed with him. And we went in, and we, we were sitting there. And so we were, like, farthest from the stage in the back. I'm like, damn, it's, it's really far. But yeah. it's still, like, $150 a ticket. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there. And out of nowhere, at the beginning, the lights go down. Everyone's screaming and shit. And then I'm like, oh, yo, there's Jay-Z. And he's, like, at the stage, he's lifting up. And then I, like, turn to the right. I'm like, fuck, yo, Kanye's <laughs> right here. Like, he was right there. And it's like a pillar. And the pillar just rises out of the ground. They both lift, like... 50 feet above uh, the ground yeah. and there's the visuals playing yeah. on the, and that was the first time I was like sold I was like Bruh. this is ill yeah. I want to do that yep. shit yep I was same way I was like yo like what and prior to that so like like I said I was a Kanye fan so I went to the Glow in the Dark tour mm. and I saw that and I was like whoa like what the fuck right. like the production value like he he really understands like what it means to like really put on a show and storytelling and Super. yeah so when i saw glow in the dark i was like okay next show kanye's doing i need to be there like there's yeah. not an option like i'm going to go to another show so watch the throne i saw it i'm like what the fuck and then what's even crazier the next tour that he does i'm actually on that tour <laughs> with kendrick oh yeah preach talk about it so like what? that see this is what i'm talking about dog these full circle moments are the best Duh, shits ever. Like I was mind blown. So, so that happens. Blah blah blah. I get in TD. Whatever. Whatever. I'm doing my job. Whatever. I start really overseeing merch, and then, um, so then they tell us like you know the whole squad is like, Kendrick. I think Kendrick just got off the Good Kid, Mad City tour, and it was like, all right, he's gonna start prepping for his next album, which turned out to be Timber Butterfly. So he got off a tour, and then we were just kind of like, whatever. And then I guess you were on that tour, right? On no, I'm not on Good Kid, Mad City. So tour. you hadn't toured yet. No, I hadn't cool. toured yet. Cool. So then, um, word gets uh, we we learned that Kanye reached out and wanted him on Yeezus. So then when I heard that, I was like, I need to get on that tour. Hell like, yeah! Like I need to get on that tour. I've I have no experience of touring. Like, mm -hmm. but I'm like, nah, I need to get on that tour. So I tell Todd, and he's like, I don't know, man. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, nah. What were you telling him? Like, yo, let me have a job? Like, on the No, road? I was just like, yeah, I, uh, let me go on tour. Like, I, I think I should go on tour, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. So I convinced him enough that I should go on tour. Fucked up terribly. <laughs> Why? I just because I didn't know what I was doing. So oh, you like, fucked up the tour? No, nah, not the tour, but just like merchandise because I was doing merchandise on the road. Yeah. So you gotta check that shit in, count it. Yeah, and I just I had no, and and not only that, but like making sure people know it's there, and because we're an opener at that point, this is all True. a Kanye show. So like, there's more that you have to do to kind of like really sell it, sell it you know. Sure. And and obviously, I had no idea about like you know inventory on the road, and just I had no idea. So I was fucking up left and right, left and right, left and right. I got fucking calls from top almost every day to the point where when I heard my phone, I got anxiety. So I had to change the ringtone on my phone <laughs> yeah, like, because that ringtone gave me anxiety. You get PTSD if that <laughs> shit goes off. When you hear like someone in DMV and their yeah. phone, boop, 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 boop. you're like, fuck. <laughs> What I do? It's like, oh, fuck. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, but it was a great learning experience, and I thank Top for like just allowing me to like just fuck up because 
I would have never learned what I learned about touring and merchandising on tour and all that stuff if I didn't go through that. Right. Through that um through that tour. But But that investment of you going on the tour almost preps your mindset to help deliver ways of selling merch for prop like upcoming tours, right? Yeah, like absolutely. now you know how it does out there. Cool. Yep. Now you can start implementing things. So if you send out a merch guy, yeah. you can have that merch guy be ma- doing this and this and this. Exactly. You know what I mean to make sure you're elevating the sales and Exactly, all exactly. Yeah, man. So what a good investment. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And then obviously to be on tour like Yeah, you were seeing Kanye Kendrick and Kanye and and you know, I'm seeing like I'm like I remember this uh Miami show. We were in Miami and I remember, I remember seeing Timbaland and Pharrell, and those are like one of like those yeah. are like my heroes, like when it comes to producing, right? So I see Timbaland, I'm like, oh shit, like what the fuck? So I tell Kendrick, I go back and tell Kendrick, and he's like, oh yeah, tell him to come by. And I'm like, what you mean? Like I don't know this dude. <laughs> like, hey bro, come over yeah, here, bro. Hey Tim, hey, like, Tim, come over here, homie. Kendrick want to talk to you, like. So I'm like, oh shit, like whatever. But uh, I found a way to like. Not connect to weirdly. him yeah connect to him through somebody else who knows him but is a part of our camp so we get him back there and then he's talking to us but like to to be in that moment so timberland comes in he's talking to kendrick about like just how to approach music and all this stuff and like just kind of like giving his two cents on like you know being a new artist and all this stuff but he's talking to me Soundwave and Kendrick so I felt like I was in that conversation because he would direct his attention to to the three of us and I'm like yo this is fucking crazy like this was my hero like when I was a kid like looking up to this dude you know on the beats and to be in a conversation and he's literally directing his attention to me is mind-blowing like mind-blowing so after that like I was like yo um sidebar throughout that tour everybody started to find out that i made beats because um i had showed like one of my beats to punch he was the first person punch is the co-president of tde he was the first person that found out that i made beats in tde so how you just you just played a song for him or something so like Why? he was in the studio right he's in the studio i'm doing merch or whatever i'm f- filling out packages and stuff and then I see that he went in the studio. The studio in Carson. Studio in like Carson. Like it was a house that was like also a studio, also the merch place. Right, exactly. Right. So I'm like, yo, like, you got to show him your music. Like, you can't let any. At this time, I think I was like a year in, maybe. Yeah, probably like a year in. And nobody knew that I made music. So I was like, all right. Punch is saying this to you? No, 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 no. This is I'm talking. Uh, this is a conversation oh, okay. that I'm having with myself. Damn, and you just killed that guy off in this <laughs> new persona. You just killed off this guy who's giving you fucking gems, wisdom, and shit. You're just like, bye, bye, <laughs> bye, bye. R. I. P. Yeah. Right, right, okay. right. Okay. So um, you better thank him. <laughs> Thanks, Mad Genius. Thanks, Mad Genius. <laughs> Still gotta die. Yeah, Anyways, bye-bye. um, so I had this conversation with myself, and I'm like, all right, fuck, like, just show him a few beats. So I go in, like, nervous as fuck. I'm like, yo, can, can, can I show you some beats? Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. He's like, yeah, play some. So I started playing some beats, and he's like, oh, shit's kind of tight. Like, send me some. Send him some beats. He emails me back, like, a week later. And it, in the email, it says, SZA Power. Right? Yeah. And this is before SZA even got signed. Right. Says the power, sends it to me. And I'm like, damn, like this shit is hard. She did a, a song to one of my beats. That's crazy. I'm like, oh shit, this is crazy, blah, blah, blah. Like, who is this? And he's like, oh, it's this chick named SZA. Like, we're thinking of signing her. I'm like, damn, this is crazy. But that moment, like, made it real. Like, okay, like, I can really do this. So, fast forward. You're like, yo, I quit merch. I'm out. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to the studio. No, I still, I still kept doing merch. I was like, hell yeah, it's gonna get better. Whatever, just keep doing merch. Fast forward to the Yeezus tour. So everybody is like, you know, you know, how they like teasing me or whatever. Like, oh, like this nigga mad. He does merch, but he low key want to do. He want to be an artist, whatever. Want to make beats or whatever. Every so, day. so Kendrick starts like 
poking at me like, yo, send me some beats, send me some beats. And I'm like mad and secure. Like, nah, dog. <laughs> no, like, I don't want to give you, just you made, beats. Nah, you just made Good Kid Mad City. I cannot even come close to that. Like, no, like, nah, not right now. So, um, you the whole thing. No? Nah, I just kind of brushed it off. Like, you literally uh, brushed it off? Wow. Insecurity genius. will do make you some, do some dumb Matt shit, bro. genius. Insecurity. That's why he needs to die. Yeah, that's why he does That's why he need to die. Bitch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Matt Jesus Straight up. Pussy. Damn, that's really crazy. You really were in arena tours with Kendrick Lamar yeah. and Kanye West. Yeah. And you have one of those two names yeah, asking, asking you for your for music. Beats, and I was like, no, yeah. no, yeah. Okay, keep going with this. So, story. please. Timbaland. Miami, whatever, Timberland, blah, 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 right? So at this point, I'm like, okay, like, this is a sign from God saying, like, bro, stop being a little bitch yeah. and show him your music. Like, God stop would being insecure. <laughs> God would say that. <laughs> stop being insecure and show these dudes your music. So after Timberland bounces, I'm like, all right, dude, like, this is your moment. Oh, that same hour, like, right same, same hour, moment. same moment. So I'm like, yo, I told Kendrick, like, yo, can I show you some beats? And he's like, oh, you're going to be that dude. Like, you know, like, you know yeah. how like people are like, yo, can I show you your music? Right, like, right. Whatever. He's like, you're going to be that dude, whatever. I'm like, well, you've been asking for it. He's like, all right, touche, whatever. Yeah. So I pull out my phone, put some headphones on him. He listens to the beats. And he's like, that's you? Yeah. Oh, shit, shit kind of tight. <laughs> oh, okay. So you want to hop on the bus? So I'm like, word? Yeah, let's hop on the bus. I'll show you some shit. So he shows me what he was recording for Tempo for Butterfly. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, just mind blown or whatever. And uh, after that, he was like, okay, like, you know, like, just keep working on the beats. And then once we get off this tour, like, you know, I'm going to really be in album mode. Yeah, come through. Keep sending beats. Like, whatever, whatever. So send them beats, send them beats. Obviously, nothing happened. But those moments kind of like really shaped like okay like i can really do this like i can really do this but still at the same time i'm still battling insecurities and I, that's mm. one of the reasons why everything like i'm doing now with the rip mad genius and um one of the um i guess slogans you can say that that i've been like kind of putting out is deaf to insecurities which is a flaw that the Matt Genius character has had and has prevented him from propelling in music or career wise and all this stuff. So I talk about that a lot on the project and the reasons why I was insecure and all this stuff. So all that plays a part and you know, all this stuff. And I think that's a, it's something that a lot of people deal with on a daily basis and it's blocks yeah, for them you that's know what i'm crazy. saying yeah that's some trippy shit yeah 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 so i would you say at that time that was kind of like um the beginning of your guys' friendship like to a stint like, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. you're in the merch shit. Like, how yeah. often are you guys running into each other? Because at that time, he's probably going to a different studio. Yeah, the house yeah. Studio, right? I, I rarely, I rarely saw him, but like on that tour, he got to know me. I got to know him. Yeah. So after that, it's like okay, like cool, like you know, yeah. you're, you're a regular person, right, like, right, you right. Know, whatever, whatever. And then from there, like you know, I'd stop in studio sessions to Pimper Butterfly, all this stuff, and just kind of like really i wasn't my my intent wasn't to get on the album it was just kind of like learn his process like how he records albums and i was i was thankful and and, and blessed to to witness that because i saw a totally different way of approaching music mm. and 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 making music like he really everything is intentional everything everything that he does has meaning to it and even from track placements and all this stuff so i didn't really think of it like that it's like okay like even like approaching a song and being like what am i trying to say on this song like what is the purpose of the song each song each thing needs to serve a purpose mm. and i didn't think of it that way so I took that knowledge and kind of just 
just tried to perfect it like you know to how yeah. he's doing it now and um i mean it, it's i think it's working but obviously i you know you can always get better but that was like me really honing into being an artist and then what what made me switch over to like starting to being an artist i was sending my beats to people and stuff and i didn't see any traction nobody was getting on it and i was like well i'm getting really good at making beats so i don't just crap on them yeah. like you know whatever and i talked to one of my homies um his name is prime maximus he's a producer too he he did like beamer benz and bentley oh, like, yeah so he's he's got he's got some some stuff in in the game um so i got some knowledge from him and he was like yo like like the best the best way to be an artist is to rap over your own beats because you know the gaps in your beats. You made the beat. You right. know how a flow should go, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. why don't you just start rapping on it? And then even if you're sending your beats out, why don't you just, you know, lay like a, a reference for a hook or whatever mm -hmm. to to spark an artist? Yeah, so exactly. I started doing that and I was sending stuff to J-Rock and then J-Rock started fucking with me. I'm like, oh shit, like this shit really works. Like because a lot of artists be like, the beat's tight, but I don't hear myself on it. Right, right, So right. I'm like, oh, okay, dope. Like, let me approach it that way. And then I think I got, I went back to, like, my love for, like, writing and rapping and all this stuff when I was a kid. So I was like, well, I got a lot of shit to say because I, I got a fucking story. Story for sure. You know, so fuck it. Start doing it. So Damn. put out a song called Green Pasta. That was the first song I put out. And then the shit just went off from there. We were sitting... Me and Matt were sitting in uh what fucking state was that where we were South, South Carolina? North or South Carolina. We had an off day and it was one of the Carolinas and like we went to this weird ass here, get yourself some wine, champion. Yeah, yeah. Get some more wine, bro. Uh we went to this weird ass like hotel resort thing and it was like some fucking get out shit. <laughs> like it was very get out esque. It was. You know what I mean? Like, it was. You know, sidebar, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Did you ever get like a, like a, the, did you ever go to the spa? At that hotel? Yeah. No, you guys talked about it. Uh, and I wish I would have gone. Was it free? Yeah. Fuck. That shit was tight. I think I found out it was free right before we left. They, of course, they had a dope <laughs> spa and shit. No, I just walked around outside by the pond. It was like very weird. Like, <laughs> like you could die out there and they could probably find a way to make sure no one found out. Low but key, low key. We just pulled up with the bus and then like bunking out in those rooms and me and Matt were like, what, we went over to get some food, and he was, like, introducing me to this, what, like, Some top, Peruvian food, Some Peruvian yeah, food. He's I like, dude, you got to try this. I've never tried that shit. So we, yeah. like, walked far and just started connecting. We're sitting there eating the food, and he tells me about green pasta. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And he started showing it to me, and I'm coming from my music background, so I'm like, oh, this is sick. Yeah. I did not know. Like, I've seen him in the hotel rooms or in the green rooms and shit, and he's just got his, like, his beat-making machine, whatever the fuck you had on the road. Yeah keyboard or whatever and he'd just be like sitting there with his headphones on like grooving out to shit and i'm like well, okay he makes music yeah or whatever but i never knew you rapped yeah and you're always like shy as fucking shit and all yeah. of a sudden you're like yeah this is my song i'm like oh damn yeah this is really dope and from then on i was like okay cool and i'd even sit there because i'm you would be in the production bus right you'd yeah. be the other bus yeah so you'd be in the production bus with all the shit and all the money and all the stuff or whatever and like making sure everything was accounted for and then I'd be in the artist bus, and I'd be sitting there with like Keem and whatever, be mm -hmm. like, "Yo, Matt's tight. Yeah, you know he raps." And I'd be like, low key trying to like, <laughs> Matt should perform. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'd be like, throw it out there. He'd be like, "Oh, for real?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, listen to this shit." He'd yeah. be like, "Wait, what the fuck?" And then everyone would be like, "Oh, listen to this shit." Yeah. And then finally, you got to like, in, I didn't even realize that you were being told by Top, like, yeah. "Yo, you should play on this shit." Yeah. But then it worked out. That shit was crazy, and it, I remember how fucking sick that was. Cause I, I, San Diego, maybe was that where all your homies came? Yeah. All your friends showed yeah. up. Like everyone was there. Like you came out and crushed it. Yeah. Then we did uh, the LA show. The LA show was at um, whatever venue. Mad fucking people were there. Yeah. Packed the fuck out. You guys went up there and performed and crushed that shit. That shit was tight. Yeah, that was, that was a crazy like experience. And then we're backstage, and I got and you had just talked to me. It reminded me about this because I filmed you yeah. with like Top and Q laughing. I don't even remember what you guys said. You, they were talking about me doing merch and like finessing my way into oh, being an artist did, and all that shit. Oh, did it all just to become an artist, <laughs> yeah. blah, 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 like making fun of it and shit. Like that shit was a trip, bro. Yeah. That's really crazy. But then after the tour, it was dope because you started a podcast yourself. Yeah. Um, you and Chris and called Genius Frequencies, mm -hmm. 
which is a cool name. Yeah. I fuck with that name. Yeah, yeah. And I, what guest number was I? How many episodes have you done? You were... Uh, Four. So the first one was with me and Chris. Second one was with uh, Lance Skywalker. Uh, the third one was with McKenna. You were the fourth one. Fourth one, right? Yeah, you were the fourth one. That shit was tight. Because I just got off the tour. Yeah. Like, because you split from us, obviously, early on. Yeah. And we'd stay in touch and shit. Yeah. And then um, we went and did Europe and all that shit and come home. And then you're like, yo, you got to get on this podcast. So I come over to the Carson house mm-hmm. and got to see the whole operation, which was cool to see all the merch and how you guys did that shit in there. Mm-hmm. And we, like, recorded in this old studio. And that was my first time doing a podcast, which was sick because I've been listening to them. But... I'd never been on one That's or whatever. Crazy. And we just talked about shit. Yeah. I have no idea if it's good. I should listen to it again. <laughs> but it was I get feedback from it still. Like people yeah. still find that podcast and be like, That's crazy. Your story is like how you did this shit. That's whatever. Wild. But you guys did a good job with that. And that shit stopped now. It's like on yeah. hiatus, right? Or yeah. whatever you guys are trying to I don't know what you're doing. Just trying to figure out the direction. Word. Yeah. But then what else has been cracking since then? Because you've been like you end up going and do the pop up shops and that shit. Would you say that that makes a lot of money? Like, are those like good? Like, is it is it good for to do a pop up shop and the idea like, uh, we like to just have the exposure, have kids, have something to do outside of going to a show, and it doesn't really make us money, or do they make like decent money off that shit? Nah, they, it's 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 great. It's a great revenue stream. Um, yeah. One of the reasons is one of the reasons it's it's so good is because you don't you don't have crazy overhead, right? So. When you have a store, you have to pay for monthly rent. You have to pay for utilities. You have to pay for all this crazy shit. When you do a pop-up shop, um, especially if you have, like, a a store Mm -hmm. um, that you have a relationship with, you pay, like, a flat fee for the day. Yeah. And then you fucking kill it on the day. (laughs) And that's it. Like, you know, you don't have to worry about, like, all the extra shit. You don't have to worry about, like... And then the demand, especially for Kendrick, the demand was so high yeah, was that crazy, like huh? it, it was the best way to do that instead of just having a store in L.A. for two, two years, yeah, yeah, three right. years. You know what I'm saying? Because albums always have waves. You know, they they have they they have life cycles. So obviously, when it first comes out, it's at its peak, mm-hmm. and then it kind of dies down. And if there's videos and stuff involved, and you kind of kind of goes in waves and then once you put out that last single and you win all the awards and stuff then the album kind of dies down right. so you got to capitalize in those moments at the peaks for sure of of demand hell yeah so for artists that 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 are established like that or even you know up and coming artists if you have some some type of demand on if you do your like analytics and stuff and you see you got a demand in ohio do a fucking pop up in Ohio. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got a demand in LA, do a pop up in LA. Like instead of opening a store, because it, the way cons- people consume things is purely internet now. Yeah. So it makes really no sense to have a f- physical storefront right. for a long time. Did you, how many kids would pull up? On a day-to-day basis. Man, were it you was, guys open just one day, and that would be the day before the show, or were you open the day of the show? Same day of the show, which was kind of cool because we really gave fans an experience the day of the show. Like, they were excited the whole entire day, you know, True. to go to the, the store, get the merch. They're excited, and it's just constant, like, excitement happening. So when they get to the show, it's like, oh, shit, Kendrick, he's yeah. on stage. Obviously, like... Kendrick fucking kills it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so that whole entire experience, I think, is a great experience for a fan. Um, it was tough doing it, and obviously it was our first time, so we really learned a lot of shit during that process. But I think on the fan standpoint, I think it was... They I got think, a treat. Yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Because I know, like, Tyler Crater would do, uh, a couple years back, <clears throat> he did it where he would go to a show, he'd play a show every other day, and in the off days, he would have his pop up shop. So you would go to the pop up shop that he would sell fucking gang of merch, mm-hmm. and then turn around the next day and have another exclusive batch of merch at the show. Right, 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 like, right, fuck, right, right. Damn. Yeah, and that's what we were doing. We we sold separate stuff at the show and separate stuff at the um, the tour. So yeah. smart. Yeah, but um, we probably would have done it the other way, where like pop up is not on the day of the show because logistically it it was. It was a nightmare. Well, I was going to say, can, does it piss a fan off the fact that 
some of these fans will wait in line the day before. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Or the wait is like six, seven, eight, yeah. nine hours before a show. Yeah. So now they have to, they know they want the merch, so they're going to that and then they're losing their spot in line as far as like getting into the venue on time or whatever. Yeah. Was that ever an issue? Um, or could it be an issue? It could, it, it could definitely be an issue. And in some moments, like when the Papa was super far from the venue, yeah. like That's certain true. fans was just like, man, I got to bounce. Like mm-hmm. I can't fucking get anything because the venue's like 30 minutes away, you right. know, almost an hour away. So, um, like I said, logistically, it could have been better, but, uh, I mean, it was our first time and I think, I think we did a really good job for what we were trying to accomplish. And at the end of the day, we were trying to create an experience for the fans. It looked crazy on your Instagram and shit. Like it just always looked fucking dope. Yeah, it was dope. And then Kendrick came out to a lot of them. I was going to say, what would he do? Would he, would he pull up and sign some shit for a little bit or? Yeah. Like shake hands, whatever, kind of like, you know, let the people kind of see him you know and and be in their presence i think that was really dope and it was it was um it was it was dope for him to allow people to have a moment with him because Mm -hmm. normally at this stage in his career the only time you really get to see him is on a stage and even then like the arenas are so big Right. It's not intimate anymore. No. Like, you know, with the, the with Q shows, like, he can literally slap a fan's hand. Yeah. You know, he Kendrick can't do that because right. how the arena is, it's just, you're like fucking, the artist is 10, 20 feet from the first row. And like you know? fucking 10 or 15 feet high. Yeah. So it's like really. It's, That's it's, really dope. Yeah. Was that every day, every time or no? Uh, no, it wasn't every time, but he did it. He did it a lot. He did it a few times. That's crazy. Yeah. Fuck. So what's next for you? Uh shit, man. Just trying to figure out um trying to figure out this music stuff. Um wrapping up the project. Yeah, what's the when's the goal and what's the goal for that? Cuz you did a video what's actually cool <clears throat> is that in the Black Window Cream in the private group. Mm-hmm. There's a kid in there uh I just saw his name pop up on here, Sean Cooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah did he yeah. shoot your shit? Shoot uh, your last video? He edited it. He, he um, edited it. Yeah, so Mouth yeah, mouth. Yeah, mouth. Uh, I I guess they have like a a group. I can't remember the name right now. Block Block ENT or something like that. Um, so some of his homies in LA shot the video and then they gave it to him. Uh, shout out to Jacob by the way. Jacob is the one who orchestrated all of that. He, yeah, it's some. This kid is sidebar. This random kid was hitting me up on uh, Instagram. He listened to Genius Frequencies and he's like eighteen year old kid. Like he just got out of high school and shit like that right and he's like yo genius frequency is tight like you know i just want to pick your brain can we just meet him and i pick your brain i'm like yeah yeah for sure whatever but uh, it never happened and then he came out to vegas and he was at the pop-up in vegas and he hit me up and then we linked and then we just started talking or whatever and he just super hungry kid like i never met an 18 year old kid who was this serious about right. like you know his shit, and he has his own clothing brand called um, uh, Threaded with Thought. Mm. So like immediately I aligned with his stuff because all his stuff was about like positivity and you know stuff like that. Like he had a, a hoodie that said self worth and cool. just all this stuff. It was it was dope, and I aligned with it. So I was like, all right, cool. Like I fuck with you. So fast forward, like you know I build a relationship with him. He is the one who kind of orchestrated that video and all this stuff. Crazy. And he pulled all the plugs together, and he knew the Sean kid. So yeah. he was like, yo, can you edit this video, blah, blah, blah. And then I would just go back and forth and kind of tell him, like, the, the concept of the character that I, that I want to play and all this stuff. So that that's why the Halloween shit is in there oh. and Jason and yeah, Michael yeah. Myers, all this shit. So, yeah, we went back and forth, and he finally, like, we – came up with something that was pretty dope and we all liked and yeah that yeah, shit came turned, out dope it turned out dope what's yeah. the other dude's name jacob jacob yeah damn that's crazy because yeah. sean so sean i know this kid because i see his name pop up all the time and he's ill yeah but what made me catch his attention or my attention was caught was by uh when kendrick was on the damn tour he took all this fan footage and cut it into like yeah. a, a little recap video yeah. or whatever, as if he were in 18 or 30 different spots. Right. On the menu. And that shit was sick. Yeah, he tight. posted, I was like, Oh, that's ill. And he posted on Twitter. And then I think 
TD retweeted it. Yeah. Oh shit, he was like all jacked or whatever. Yeah. But I saw his shit. And he hit me up when he was out here in LA too, and I didn't know he had worked with you until yeah. like later on or whatever. Yeah. But that's just like Black Widow Cream is dope because it's yeah. got these motherfuckers in that shit that's putting tight. in the work. That's dope, man. That's crazy. But yeah, the music's gonna be up next, and then are you? Do you have to go overseas then for the pop up shops? Or is there gonna be out of country pop up shops? Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, just go sell some shit over there. Man. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. Is Kendrick supposed to tour anymore? Is that out? Is there dates for shit? Yeah, yeah. He's he's doing Europe uh, top of the year. I think February. February. Yeah, February. So yeah, go there and sell. Do some pop ups, dog. Yeah. Fucking stress your brain out a little bit more. G. <laughs> Damn. Would you say that like now that you've done the u.s once then you've kind of learned and paid your way would you go do that for another company like if another company wanted pop-up shop could they like come to you or like hire you to like oversee or foresee shit like that um that kind of be dope I, I i probably i would like advise and like give like you Consultant know yeah i would shit. consult but like me being on the road and doing it for them like nah because at this point like i i, I know what i want to do yeah and that would just take away from what i want to do which is which is music and just being creative and obviously building the TD brand and stuff like that. So it would just take away from you right. know, what I'm doing now. So right, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. So I did. I let some people in the private group like ask questions or whatever, just because I told them that you were gonna be through coming through here. Sean Cooper actually asked questions. Nice. He says, "Hey guys, what's good? I'll post a question for Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God." <laughs> He said, I have a few friends that are interested in designing, selling merch to help fund and market their music from the ground up. What are some pitfalls or things to look out for that I could trip them up? He goes, P.S. I'm flying back to L.A. on Sunday and still booking between the 20th and 27th. If you guys have anything to work on, I want to link up. Always plug. Dope. But yeah, what he, you know, what are some pitfalls or things to look out, out for that could trip them up? on the come up you know um i think the number one thing that number one mistake people make is spending too much money on merchandise that is not in demand so if you buy a ton of t-shirts and you have no demand for it you're literally going to be sitting on that inventory right for sure so the best thing to do is like start building your brand and building your demand so where you see like people are requesting like, yo, you should, you know, slap down on a T and you start seeing that, <clears throat> then you do that. Um right. because it it's just it, it doesn't make any sense for you to spend all that money on sell your t shirts and then it's just sitting there. What's like, the difference between that and like setting trends? You know what I mean? Because some you can wait until someone's like, Hey, you should put the that stamp you made on a t shirt and you're like, Oh, good idea and then enough people say it, you know they're gonna buy it. But like what's the difference between that and be like, yo, this shit is gonna. People are gonna be like, fuck, I need that. If that is, if that is the case, like if you do, if you really do believe in that as as your brand, I I would say, me personally, I would say like, start giving it to your friends to wear because mm -hmm. everyone is an influencer. Literally, right. everyone is an influencer. You influence a bunch of people. I influence people. You know, somebody working at fucking wherever they yeah. they have people who they have influence over. Right. So, start giving it to your friends. Start giving T-shirts to your friends or whatever, and just let them wear it. Mm -hmm. And kind of start building that brand, that brand, and that demand to where it's like, okay, like people know about my shit. Like it's out there. It's physical. You have your social media. You have your fucking Instagram or whatever. Right. You're posting. You're getting content from people wearing your shit. And then once you start building that demand, make small runs, small runs, small runs, small runs, not a crazy amount. And then when you sell out, make more. Right, like right, if there's right. more demand, but you you never want to like put yourself in that hole to where you have a bunch of inventory and you can't yeah, sell you're just it. Like, Fuck. Yeah. Uh, let's see who else asked question. Joe Newcomer. He said, what up, Ben? Definitely looking forward to this one. How does a label like TD select their screen printing companies and merch suppliers? I own, operate a screen printing embroidery company out of Iowa. Ooh, shout out to him. Yeah. That's tight. Definitely. And would love to work with uh, more labels and artists, just not sure the best way to approach and start the conversation. Um, well, for us, it's kind of like it's kind of like word of mouth. Um, and then we kind of build relationships and, you know, meet at a medium and – for us right now, we have we have great relationships with who we produce our stuff with. Obviously, we're open to you know other companies, but I think from his side and kind of trying to 
get into, you know, getting a big client like like a TD or whatever, I think the best bet is to give free samples. Like mm. that you're going to lose money. Right. You're going to lose money. But for me speaking like personally for me what really won me over is the fact that A the company was really about the brand and not just like on some like OTD's oh, big let me attach myself on right, right, so right. I can win but literally like I care about you guys' shit bec- and I want to bring quality to it because I care I am a fan blah 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 and then from there free samples and you know you work at building the brand on the production side you don't look at it as you are a client and I only care about like the bottom line which yeah, is yeah, money yeah. no you care about the quality of the brand and growing the brand right so you know for someone in production i think you should grow with brands that you care about if you don't care about the brand there's really no point of you even working with them like honestly. for sure what uh, when you say like giving free samples do you mean like um like they're just sending you options for clothes? Are you saying they're actually printing and showing you concepts, a proof of concepts exactly. and shit like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like don't make it hard for uh, someone to print a tee because they're just going to be like, man, like I'm just trying to get this shit done and see it. But even how you said it earlier, that's interesting because you're talking about how you sat there making beats all day long and people weren't getting on that shit. And yeah. then you turn around and show J-Rock, like, hey, this could be a catchy hook or this. Oh, yeah, that's dope. I could see myself sounding like that. Right, right, you're right, like, right. You know, you're showing proof of concept. Yeah. That's like the ideal scenario. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. That's dope. All right, let's see. What else do we got here? What else do we got here in the Black Widow Cream Group? Uh, Corey Sparks, he says, good day, Ben. He sounds like he's from overseas. <laughs> yeah. As a person who has been in Japan, I rarely see a lot of artists come here. Does that? Does the TDE team plan... Um, on expanding outside of the U.S. for their promotions. Yeah, for sure. We just did a um, we just did a pop up in Japan. In Japan? Yeah, not too long ago. Oh shit! Yeah, you have to come next time. Corey. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but yeah, what uh, I mean, what else are you guys trying to do to get more active? Is it like banking on internet, or would you like to see yourself doing more pop ups like that? Off, not even on some tour shit. Like, if no one's on tour, could you guys see yourself popping up in a place? Just be like, hey, here's some TV shit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all up for discussion, but no, nah, definitely. Absolutely. Right. That's dope. All right. Well, anyway, Corey, they were just there. You you missed the uh, whole shit. <laughs> um, Alwa Gordon says, dude, thank you for the podcast. No problem, dog. I appreciate you <laughs> listening. That makes me smile. If you're watching this on the YouTube, because hey. I'm eventually going to get all this shit on YouTube. Oh, dog, I totally forget you. Was I know, I'm filming it in three ways. Um, yeah, you can see me smiling. Anyway, that stuff, the stuff that ex-punk artist was saying really hit home. I was forcing my dream on other people. Props, man. Okay, that was just a random fan comment. He's no, talking tight. about... Uh, the dude that I just had Oliver Francis on there. That's dope. Yeah, that kid, he was really tight. Have you heard of him? Oliver no, Francis? No, no, You should no. look him up. So I just, it was interesting because I did the podcast where I like met him on the podcast. I didn't what? know anything about him. That's crazy. It was really cool because I liked the idea of like being like, damn, okay, like what if I don't know you? Like yeah. if I'm in the elevator, someone might have a crazy story, but like what if you were forced to sit there and meet or all those organic times where you meet someone? Like what if someone recorded our conversation yeah. the first time we met? Yeah, yeah. It'd probably be tight. That would be tight. And that's what happened with him. I was like meeting this kid and his whole shit. He like is from Missouri and he's got like 33 million views on his YouTube channel. Yeah. Just making music. And his goal was like, I'm just going to put out a video every month. And Damn. it worked. It was crazy. Yeah. Shout out to Oliver Francis. And Damn. shout out to this dude for just leaving a random ass comment. That was dope. <laughs> uh, my homie Brazil, he commented on here. He said, question, what book has impacted your life? Ooh, man. The Alchemist. The Alchemist. The Alchemist. I gotta read that. Paulo Coelho. Yeah. Everyone says that's a banger. Yeah. What's like one thing you took away from that book? I I don't know anything about it. I always say this quote, uh, this story. Um. So, so there the 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 background of this the book is there's this kid. He's a like he's like a shepherd. So he raises sheep and sells them. Okay. And um, he has this dream of uh, I can't even remember what the dream is, but he has a oh he has a dream of like finding this treasure and being rich and blah blah blah. blah. But oh, yeah. his parents and his the town is like, you're crazy. Like, are you crazy? Blah, 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 blah. So this is a big metaphor of like you following your dreams, but people are telling you like, nah, you can't do that. You can't be you can't be a film guy, Ben. You right. know, like you can't be an artist, Matt. Like, that's fucking crazy. Right. So this kid is like, nah, like I really believe in it. So he goes on his journey. He, he works at a bank and then he, 
He works at right. <laughs> Warner Bros. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, go on. sorry, I'm a clown. Uh, so, yo, time. Can I use a bathroom? No, we're almost done. Oh, we got like fuck. finish it, finish, finish it. This is it. This all is right. the last thing. All right, all right. So the kid is a shepherd, sells sheep, blah blah blah. Um, he finds out about this dude named the Alchemist. Is out. The Alchemist is like just this fucking guru. Like right. he just knows about life, right? right? So he goes on his journey to find him. People were like he meets people to send him on a journey to the Alchemist. He finally finds the Alchemist, and the Alchemist is like like giving him gems but in like a Mr. Miyagi way mm. to where it's like this, him this rich simple shit him. Yeah. yeah this simple mind shit and the kid is like okay whatever but this the thing that really stuck out to me the most was so the alchemist had the kid hold a spoonful of oil and he was like I want you to walk around the forest and I want you to look around but I do not drop a, do not spill a drop of oil right so the kid is like all right whatever walks around the forest and he's like mad focused on the oil like to not drop it he walks around he finally gets back to the alchemist and then the alchemist is like so what did you think he's like think of what and he was like the forest he was like i didn't see it he was like why not he was like i was focused on not dropping the oil so he's like all right go around one more time look at the forest he goes around looks at the forest you know, he's looking at the forest, blah, blah, blah. He gets back to the alchemist, and he's like, the alchemist is like, what happened to the oil? He was like, oh, shit, I didn't even remember. Like, the oil was there. And he was like, life is about balance. It's about balancing focus, but also enjoying it. And I was like, damn. Bah. But there's so many quotes and stories oh, yeah. that's within that that book Damn. It's similar to that that's just one that stuck out to me i haven't read it in like a long ass time i need to reread it like kind of, especially with this yeah, perspective that too. that's an amazing book fuck book yeah people need to especially now with this whole net neutrality shit yeah motherfuckers really need to read books fuck yeah like it's gonna be so important yeah like, absolutely so important to spread yeah. information because they really about to like control the internet That's now, you crazy. know. So the uh Alwa Gordon, this is the last question to answer as quick as possible. Yeah. What is one tip you would give to an upcoming artist? Believe in yourself and keep going. There you go. That's it. You have to pee? It. You got pissed real bad or something? This is how we're gonna end the podcast. You gotta go potty. <laughs> okay. I, w- I really was thinking like, all right, I'll stop this shit, let him go, but no, like, we're there. We yeah, talk- That was a good cool. story right there. Yeah. We'll have to do this again and shit. Yeah, man. This um, is tight. Yeah, so the out- project's coming out soon. Soon, yes. Uh, if you want to, if you're interested in what I do, all this stuff, please follow R.I.P. Matt Genius on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, I have a website, R.I.P. Matt Genius.com. Mm. Um, yeah, man. So just stay tuned on social, and when you drop that shit, they'll know? Yeah. Cool. That's it. When do you think? When is it supposed to come out? When is it ready? Top of the year? Maybe. Maybe. Yes, follow him. Might come out two years from now. Follow <laughs> his ass. It might, we don't know. Yeah. All right, Dope Dog. I appreciate you coming on the shit and dropping your knowledge and hopefully empowering these motherfucking creators. My guy. Thanks, Thank doggy. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. You can go pee now. <laughs> Bye, bye, bye. That's it for episode 13 with Matt Genius. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Make sure to follow Matt on all platforms. Catch his next live show if he's got one in your area and buy some merch from his clothing company. You can find all these links in the show notes, which you can find at bwnc.com slash podcast. Leave us a review on iTunes. Let me know what you loved about this interview. Also, if you're interested in joining the Black Window Cream private group for creators, visit bwnc.com slash join. And last but not least, buy some merch. All that merch helps me keep this thing alive. All right, subscribe to this channel. New episode every Sunday. See you next week, you bitch!